And as of tonight, as amazing as it is to say, it does appear that Democrats intend to keep their voters in the twilight zone. The party will not only continue to pretend that Joe Biden is capable enough to be the president right now, but it does appear they appear to be broadly supporting Biden's run for another four years in the White House. Today, Biden reaffirmed his support to be the nominee from the Congressional Black Caucus and also the Hispanic Caucus, which of course are crucial in the race-obsessed Democrat Party. And then a much anticipated Senate press conference today where Chuck Schumer and other Democrats spewed a lot of abortion fear-mongering. And then Chuck was then forced to uncomfortably admit three different times that yes, Joe Biden is still the guy. No, I want to call on the woman first. Thank you, Talking about abortion, sure. Are, are, are you confident that President Biden has what it takes to win in November and serve the next four years? As I've said before, I'm with Joe. There might be a challenge at the convention, and if there is, is there the ability to throw out the virtual nomination? As I've said before, I'm with Joe. As I've said before, I'm with Joe. But Senator Schumer, does Thank it you, leave everybody. Democrats in a difficult position? What do you say? And he heads for the hills. Now, knowing how Democrats crack the whip and keep their party in line, that was pretty huge, right? It seems the pressure that we have seen these last few days is likely going to start easing on Joe Biden, but it wasn't easy to get there. Today, House members from swing states held a closed-door meeting where some were reportedly crying, realizing there's no way they can possibly be reelected with Biden still the nominee. And it appears he is still the nominee, but it does appear that he's the guy. And after a major flex by the White House, consolidating power around a half-dead candidate, that's not easy to do. And yet they somehow did it. It's pretty impressive, actually. Even the squad vo voicing its support, AOC, Ayanna, Ilhan, Bernie, all staying with Biden today. The White House's abandonment of Israel clearly paying off. John Fetterman also voicing support. Cranton, Scranton Joe or bust, it seems. And in truth, without Joe Biden, it would be a bust in Pennsylvania. Imagine how Kamala Harris performs with blue-collar families that live outside Pittsburgh. Think about Michigan. Think about Wisconsin. You think about that, it's pretty easy to see what happened today. The party decided that even a brain-dead Joe Biden has a better shot at the title than Kamala Harris with all her faculties. What an incredible insult from a party that is so infatuated with race and equity. It's actually hilarious when you think about it. And even worse, if you heard House Democrats kind of meekly announcing their support for Biden today, you noticed something. They barely even talk about Joe. They mostly just talked about Trump when they kind of said, yeah, Joe's still the guy. Take a look. Donald Trump cannot be allowed near the Oval Office, and his extremist allies must never be allowed to pass a national abortion ban or their dangerous Project 2025. What House Democratic Caucus leadership is um, asking uh, their members to do uh, our members is to you know, talk about the importance of preventing Donald Trump from ever setting foot in the White House and to prevent Donald Trump uh, from ever setting foot in the White House. Hmm. So the election is now fully a referendum on Trump. According to the other side, the ticket might as well be empty on the Democrat side. The ballot should just read Trump as president, yes or no. The charade that we've seen today from Democrats, and this was a charade, reeks of phony, though, to the average American voter. This is exactly why people hate politics. All these people are aliens. Saying Joe Biden is still fit and he's still our guy, it's as outrageous as going outside and saying the sky is red. But there are some loyal Biden elites in the media that are helping the party to achieve this ridiculous hoax that they're pulling over all of us right now. And one of them is Lawrence O'Donnell, who last night on MSNBC scolded the White House press corps for asking tough questions at yesterday's press briefing. Take a listen to this. It was the White House press corps, many of them, at their absolute worst in the way they approached Press Secretary uh, Karine Jean-Pierre, who was trying to be responsive to medical questions where there were limitations on what she could say. But she did, in fact, answer 
every single time the reporters kept banging on about a New York Times report today that indicated that a neurologist had visited the White House eight times in the last year. So imagine being this sycophantic over Joe Biden, of all people, scolding the most left-wing White House press corps in the history of this country, scolding the fake reporters who carry Joe Biden's water daily, who carry the Democrat Party and the establishment's water every single day, scolding them for, what, having one day where they scramble to save their credibility? Imagine pretending to believe Corrine Jean-Pierre's excuse when she claimed that she can't reveal whether a Parkinson's doctor who visited eight times in eight months was there to see the president because it would somehow compromise others at the White House who see doctors, which was literally the stupidest excuse you could have possibly come up with as she was badgered with questions about why the hell is there a Parkinson's doctor here every month for eight months? And then Larry O'Donnell goes on MSNBC and pretends to buy that excuse hook, line, and sinker and scolds the media, which are fully aligned with the Democrat Party and the establishment. You scold them. There is so much credibility bleeding out in Washington right now, the Potomac is red. This is what happens when power is threatened. They are losing it in this moment. Losing it. And you see how fake it all is in these moments, and it's amazing to watch. The threat of populism, the idea that this government might soon have to start working for the actual people of this country again, has these people pulling their hair out, has them willing to do and say just about anything to keep that from happening. Just like we just saw in France, the threat of populism. Look what Macron destroyed his whole country to keep a populist government out. You're going to see the same thing here.